Welcome back to our intermediate financial accounting class. Over our last few segments, we've been talking about leases, one of the most exciting topics in accounting today. Over these last segments, we've talked about what a lease is, why it's important. We've talked about the methods for accounting for a lease for the lessee, and we've done some journal entries and some examples of that accounting. And then in our last segment, we started focusing on the lessor. We talked about the three different ways that a lessor can classify a lease, including that direct financing option that you won't see very often, at least in our examples. We also started talking about the steps that the lessor would use to record the lease for the more common sales type or operating options. And then we wrapped up that last discussion by starting to work through the lessor's amortization schedule. And I asked you to start with these numbers that we calculated together at the end of our last segment and finish up the amortization schedule for the lessor. And hopefully your numbers look something like this. Now your numbers may be a little bit different, maybe a dollar here or there in either the interest revenue or the least receivable balance. That happens when we're doing amortization and time value calculations, especially when you round to the nearest dollar instead of the nearest penny, but that's okay. We're not gonna worry about a dollar here or there. Just be aware that if you have to make an adjustment, we make that adjustment down in the interest revenue in that final line item so that we get rid of that dollar or two of rounding that may have accumulated over the life of the lease. Now that we have our amortization schedule, we're ready to jump right in and do our journal entries. Yes, the best part. So let's go ahead and bring up a blank sheet of paper or slide in this case. And we're gonna do the journal entries side by side for the two different kinds of leases. And we're gonna start with the entries on January 1 when this lease is created. We're gonna start by recording what FASB has decided to call a net investment in lease, which is, most companies are starting to abbreviate NIL. This is going to be the number right here at the bottom of the second column. It'll be the $300,000. And we're gonna credit whatever we paid for this equipment. Now, if we bought it at market value and then lease it at market value, then our credit is going to be to equipment or inventory for that same 300,000. That's what happened in this case. But if we made it ourselves, say for $200,000 or $250,000 in a sales type lease, I could recognize that revenue here. So I'd record my net investment in lease at the market value, $300,000. And then I would record the equipment at what I put into it. And I could record sales revenue as my plug figure. We could also record a loss if we happen to buy it or make it for more than we can lease it for at this point. Basically, we put the historical cost in as a credit, we put the value from our lease amortization table in as our debit, and then the sales revenue or loss on lease as our plug figure. This is going to be to record the net investment in lease. But we're not done. We also have to record those initial direct costs and those haven't been recorded yet. If we have included them because we're going to defer them, so we use that special implicit interest rate calculation, then the deferred initial direct costs end up as part of that NIL value. So we'd show 304,000 up there as our net investment in lease with a special credit of 4,000 to cash. In this case, we're not recording it and deferring it. We're just gonna record it as part of our expenses this period. So I'm gonna call that lease expense. But some companies might call this some kind of a sales expense, etc. because it's part of making the sale using a lease. This is to record the initial direct cost. And that finishes up step two 
for a sales type lease. Now let's take a look at an operating lease. And for an operating lease, we are going to defer the initial costs and we'll credit cash for those to record initial direct costs and right there we start saying wait a minute wait a minute that means then that we have to do that implicit interest rate right well no we don't because with an operating lease the calculations are really easy. We record the cash that comes in as rent or lease revenue, and that's it. And then we amortize away this asset, because as far as the lessor is concerned, I still own this asset, you're just borrowing it for a little while. So I'm amortizing away the asset, and I'm going to amortize away these expenses each period, but I'm not doing anything fancy with the amortization table at all for an operating lease. So that takes care of step two. We record these initial direct costs, and for the sales type lease, we get rid of the equipment showing that we've sold it off and we show this net investment in lease which is kind of a receivable account because it's what we intend to get back it's not like accounts receivable though because accounts receivable is short term this would be long term receivables so let's go ahead now and go on to step three and step three is recognizing our cash so the cash comes in 56825 and we're going to reduce our net investment in lease so NIL for that same amount this is cash received from lessee and the entry will look almost the same for an operating lease, cash is still coming in. But in this case, we're going to record it as some kind of revenue. So I'm going to call it lease revenue. But you'll also see it called rent revenue. Now you will sometimes see companies, especially doing a sales type lease, combining this first entry and the third entry, and that's okay too. Works the same way, even if we had to show a profit, we could combine those entries and just have that sales revenue in there as well as one of our two credits. That's the first part of step three are the payments, but we also will record some end of the year journal entries. So at the end of the year, interest has now accrued all year long for the sales type lease and for the operating lease this asset is a year older so it needs to be depreciated so what we're going to do on December 31st for the sales type lease is we're going to debit NIL and we're going to credit interest revenue for the number right here in the table 9727 that's how much interest has accrued from the time they made the first payment record accrued interest on lease and then to wrap up the sales type lease the other thing we need to know is what will show up on our balance sheet so let's take a look at our nil or net investment in lease we started the year with zero we then put into it three hundred thousand we reduced it by the payment so 56 825 and then we showed another increase of 9727 so you'll notice that we're not putting this in as interest receivable FASB wants it kept with the with the lease so it goes into this net investment in lease account and that's going to give us a ending balance at the end of the year of 252902 So now we have all of the journal entries for our sales type lease for that first year, and we've got what would go on the balance sheet in our long-term investments category, since it can't go in with our receivables. For our operating lease, we actually have two entries. The first, we're gonna record a lease expense of some kind, and we're gonna amortize away our deferred 
initial direct costs. This is an adjusting entry for direct costs. And the calculation is simply the initial direct costs divided by the number of years of the lease. So $1,000. And then if we needed to, we could weight that by the number of months over 12. But January to December is 12, so we don't have to worry about that. We would also, since this asset is still ours, we're just letting somebody else borrow it, we're going to record either an amortization or a depreciation expense. I'm going to use depreciation because in this case, we said that this was equipment. We had it as equipment and then we leased it out. And if it had been equipment on our books, then we would have depreciated it instead of amortizing it. So at least that's by convention, but using amortization expense and accumulated amortization also just fine. This is an adjusting entry for depreciation. And to calculate that, we do a normal depreciation entry. We're just going to assume straight line. We're going to assume it was worth $300,000 on our books, which we know it was. We thought it would have a $60,000 salvage value in six years, which gives me a depreciation each year of $40,000. I'm just going to depreciate it like any other pp &E on my books. Now, here's the cool thing about operating leases. Well, one of the cool things. Again, hopefully you've noticed operating leases are much easier than the sales type lease. It's pretty straightforward. And if we use straight line methods for amortizing the initial direct costs and the depreciation spends, then those entries are going to be the same every single year until we get the asset back. So in this case, it's really straightforward. I'm going to make those same three entries, payment, initial direct costs, and amortization or depreciation on the asset every single year makes it really straightforward. Now, the sales type lease isn't quite that simple because our interest is changing. So let's take a look at year two and what those entries would look like. I'm gonna start this time with the operating lease because we know it's gonna look just the same as it did last time. I'm gonna have cash come in. I'm gonna record lease revenue or rent revenue. For that 56825. This is payment by lessee. And then on December 31st, I'm going to record lease expense of a thousand and deferred initial. Direct cost of a thousand. This is an adjusting entry. And I'm not going to do the calculation again because we know what that calculation is going to look like. It's just the 4,000 divided by 4 that we just talked about. Let's go ahead and put in our depreciation expense and our accumulated depreciation. Again, it's an adjusting entry. And the amount will be the same because I'm using straight line. All right, and that takes care of my operating lease. That's all there is to it. They look exactly the same as they did for the previous year. Sales type leases will be a little bit different because I have to record the changes in the interest expense. So this part will stay the same. We're going to debit cash, 56 825 and we'll still credit our net investment in lease payment by lessee and now on December 31st we will record an increase to our NIL 
and interest revenue. And we'll go back to our amortization schedule and we can see right there that it's 78.43. Let's go back and put that in. This is to record accrued interest on lease or something similar. Now those are all the entries that I have to make for my sales type lease. Pretty straightforward. Again, numbers are changing each period, but once I have my amortization schedule, it's really easy to go ahead and grab those numbers. Let's go ahead and update our balance. So we'll bring up our T account. There's our balance from last time. And we received a payment for 56825 and accrued interest of 78.43, which gives us a new ending balance of 203.9. And there we have it, the entries for both the sales type and the operating type lease for our lessor. Wasn't that fun? I love doing the journal entries. Now we're gonna stop here. We could go on, but I want you to have the fun. So go ahead and do the entries for year three and then come back and watch the next segment. We'll go through them briefly and then move on to year four and do the entries for receiving the asset back as the lease terminates. We'll see you then. Thanks.